Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us for this workshop. I am very excited about this workshop. This evening, we're going to have Dr. Joy Johnson, and she is going to give us a phenomenal workshop, Coping with Loss. Now, we know that during the pandemic, a lot of people have experienced loss. So this information that you're going to receive this evening is going to be very relevant and very um, pertinent. So welcome, welcome, uh, get the information, gather the information that's needed. And, you know, sometimes it's not for you, sometimes it's for someone else. So definitely take the information. So before we get started, I'm just going to give you a brief um, history of myself and my company. So my name is um, Francesca Sampson. I am the founder of Take Care of Mental Health. And what Taking Care of Mental Health does is we promote mental health awareness, primarily in the Christian community, but not only limited to the Christian community. Now we know there continues to be a stigma with mental health. So this is what we wanna do, we wanna raise awareness and also give people um, vital support and resources. And some of them can be in the form of workshops, such as this one. All right, and this is the contact information. If you wanna contact us, you can go email, you can contact us by email, you can visit my website. If you wanna support the cause that we're doing here, because we have a lot of different things that we do, such as scholarship, feel free to send an email or visit the website. Now, Dr. Johnson, that's gonna be our primary presenter for this evening. She is the CEO and president of Shattered, Shepherd for the Shattered, I'm sorry, Shepherd for the Shattered Counseling Service. And their mission there is, there is hope at the end of your rope. And Lord, we need to hear that information. She provides counseling to individuals, couples, families, and groups. And she focuses on depression, anxiety, relationship, the works, uh, you know, the list is here, but if you need more information on Dr. Johnson's uh, services and what she provides, she's also a publisher. And I, I hope she talks um, a little bit about the new book that she's published, okay? And here's her email, here's her website. If you wanna support the cause, feel free to, um, cash app her, the information is right here. And also we're gonna be putting this information in the chat as we go along. All right, so without further ado, I am going to pass this presentation over to Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, thank you so much for agreeing to do this workshop and I'm gonna turn it over to you. I appreciate this uh, opportunity, Fran, um, to, you know, to talk about uh, grief and loss. Um, so I, my name is Joy Johnson, and uh, my husband um, and I will be married. My husband, Larry Johnson, he's on there. Show your face a little bit <laughs> um, and get back off if you want. But anyway, um, <laughs> So we're married for um, this August will be 14 years mm -hmm. and um, we have I have four biological children we have bonus children as well so both sides I hear you so, is that you Larry so um, <laughs> and uh, let me see oh so I have my doctorate in Christian counseling um, I have a, uh, my business called uh, that the Lord gave me and Oh, when, when I was grieving, <laughs> speaking of grief, uh, about 2002, the Lord gave it to me and it didn't come to fruition until um, 2000 and around the pandemic time. Okay. And let me see. And um, I have a master's of arts in psychology. I have a, a bachelor's in be uh, applied behavioral science and I'm a, a board certified Christian counselor. Um, and let me see. 
so, oh, I'm an author also of two books. Um, one is called um, Forgive Me, I Love You, Those Five Words of Grace. And also, um, which deals with grief as well, some of it. Um, because any type of trauma, and I'm going into it, uh, the, what we're going to talk about, any type of uh, trauma that you, you, people grieve, and, and grief is trauma as well. Um, so that was born out of that. And the, I mean, the Lord knew what he was doing. So many times when we go through situations, it's God wants to use it for a specific pur purpose. And sometimes he gives us an assignment as a result of what we've gone through. Um, and the other book is um, as a result of my dissertation um, from my doctorate degree. And that's a guide for traumatized children. And that had to do with four children who I counseled. We had 14, uh, 17 sessions, mm -hmm. but it also talks about the trauma that it, you go through as a child. And if you never deal with them, it affects other relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so important to deal with the childhood trauma that you go through, um, the, the childhood trauma, um, especially if, you, if you're looking forward to have it to enjoying life. If not, you're going to be stuck in the situation that you, that uh, from when it happened when you were a child. So that's um, uh, basically my 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 introduction in <laughs> in uh, a combination of <laughs> the what I'm about to talk about. So, um, Larry, did you want to say anything real quick? I didn't hear you. I said, did you want to say anything real quick? Say oh, hi. no, you, you got the stage. You go ahead. I'm just waiting to hear my wife speak. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I mute you? Whoops. I don't know if you. Okay. Oh, you, you, I think you did already. Yes. Yes, he did. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, this is, it, it says, are you coping with grief and loss? And as you know, I don't, can everyone see the screen? Can okay. you put it on slideshow so um, it's bigger? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Like slideshow all the way in the top. I, I see it, yes, right. thank you. Thank and then you from the that. beginning. Okay. Oh, not now. Yeah, okay, right. there we go. Yes. Um, all right. Let me just exit out of that. Okay. So there we go. Um, so what is what is grief? Grief, and you can take a screenshot if, if you would like to. Mm -hmm. uh, grief is a natural response to death or loss. The grieving process is an opportunity to appropriately mourn a loss and then heal. The process is helped when you acknowledge grief, uh, find support, and allow time for grief to work and it, if you don't really know this um it can be t a person can make some decisions that can affect them long term and it can be negative decisions and one of the things that i've learned is the the phrase halt h-a-l-t when you're hungry um, um alone um uh, i'm sorry hungry angry lonely and tired. It's not good to make um, long-term decisions because it can have, um, the consequences can be great, can, can affect you, your family greatly in a negative way. Um, so grief is one of the things um, that you just need to go through a process to, to just get through. Um, what are the causes of grief? Um, and, and please jump right in there if you if someone needs to, to make you know a comment or have if you have a question or anything um, and I'm hope I hope I'll be able to answer um, the causes of grief people can feel loss when they lose a, fa a close family member or friend through an accident suicide sickness um, COVID is one of the major things that uh, people have experienced a loss through and um, I've experienced um, losing two family members um, back to back, like April 1st, wow. April 3rd. 
um, of COVID, my mother's brother, my uncle, and his wife. This was when COVID um, first, um, you know, came to the United States, so to the United States, so to speak. <laughs> um, but anyway, they, you know, so that that was one of the things that that we had to get through, that my mother had to get through. Um, cancer is another thing. Um, heart attack um, example, you know, that's another example. Um, and even what people sometimes take lightly and, and, and people are just like having abortions like crazy. The abortion rate is high, um, but there are long lasting effects and, and people don't know why someone may have a, an abortion. It could be the pimp, and I'm, this is being real, um, because I worked in a women's care I, I volunteered at a women's care center and they told me, gave me a heads up, told me a pimp may be bringing their, the woman in uh, for an abortion. Um, it doesn't mean that she wants that, but you know, they, they bring them in. So I'm just, you know, giving you an example of how, um, yes, pe some people uh, do have pregnancies that they, that they're forced to, to get rid of. They're forced to, um, have an abortion, and it has a long-lasting effects. Um, it it you grieve, um, you grieve the loss of your child. Um, I, I've experienced that, and um, I've experienced that, and so there's I've gone through that process, so I know what it is, and I've been able to help other women get through um, that as well. Um, also the separation from a loved one, going back to the slide, um, losing a job, um, just not having an income, a pet dies. People take that lightly also when the pet dies. And um, that, that's, yeah, that's right. of grief. Um, so you guys who just joined us, do you mind muting please? Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and also when there's a major change in the, in the life, um, a divorce, a divorce is like losing a part of you um, because you were married, you have that bond, you have that, that vow. Uh, also, um, sometimes losing uh, in a relationship, just losing a, a, a boyfriend, losing a girlfriend, that can cause someone, especially if one loved the other so much, put all the eggs in one basket, that can cause great heartache, that can cause trauma, devastation. And that's what, um, that, that's grief as well. So is there a time frame for grieving? Grief has no timeline and no one can tell you how long to grieve. I remember, and, and I, I can give this, um, it's some information, some something that had that I did, that um, I used to. It, it's a lesson learned. I remember growing up. Um, I think I was in high school or maybe after high school. Uh, my best friend, her sister, died, and she, yeah, her sister died, and I remember. I remember two years went by, and I said to her, um, "You still." you're still grieving, you're still sad. I was, mm -hmm. I was ignorant, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, you're still sad, come on, you know, get over it. Who was I to tell her, you know, you know, give her a time frame? Yeah. That was her sister, she, that, who she's been with all her life. And then here's only two years that went by um, that she's grieving the loss of her sister. So it, it takes time for a person, it takes God, and, and there's a process. And so um, just like the slide says, when we grieve, we can't control the process. We can't control how long it takes or how, how many times it starts over. A common misconception about grief is that there is a linear timeline that one must pass through in, in order to come to terms with the death of a loved one. Um, and it, then it says, um, I wish I could get rid of that. There's something blocking it, <laughs> but there's no timeline. Um, only God 
is the one who he is the healer. Um, mm -hmm. He is Jehovah Rapha, and he can heal the, the grief that people feel. Um, my husband just shared with me that um, uh, I th believe yesterday he found out about a loss of a first cousin or close relative um, on his side of the family. So, you know, there's depending on, I mean, that's no one wants to hear of a loss. Yeah. You know, it's a part of life. Um, and, and that's important. And then there's some things that we need to take care of, if, especially if it's a very close family member. And that's um, making sure that if it's a spouse, um, if it's you know, your child, make sure in advance that you have the life insurance um, that way, because that can add on to the grief yeah. that the family may go through. I would not want to, my family to see them suffer. I mean, well, I wouldn't if it, God forbid, it was me, but mm -hmm. just while I'm alive, I wouldn't want to know that they're going to suffer if I was gone. It's so important to take care of things like that in advance to make sure your family is, um, you know, financially stable and, you know, to secure because, and, and not have that burden or added burden um, on, on their mind. So the stages of grief, um, there are specific stages of grief and they reflect common reactions people have as they try to make sense of a loss. The common stages are denial, uh, numbness and shock, bargaining, depression, anger, and acceptance. And the first stage of grief is denial, numbness, and shock. There's so, so many people, they're like, they just, it, you've seen, you, I believe, you know, by now everyone is not so tiny that they don't remember or, or haven't experienced this. You've mm -hmm. seen people gone to funerals and um, you've heard, you know, oh, so-and-so died and it's like, what? Oh my goodness, oh, you know. Um, so it, it's, it's so hard to believe, it's shocking that, that you, you experience uh, numbness uh, sometimes or denial or like I can't, they say, I can't believe it. You yeah. hear me, many people say, I can't believe it. Numbness is a normal reaction to death, um, to a death or loss and should never be confused with not caring. Um, the second stage of grief is bargaining. Um, this stage of grief, grief may be marked by persistent thoughts about uh, what could have been done. What could I have done to prevent the death of loss? And many times it's nothing, mm -hmm. but w that's because we, we wish they were here. We didn't want them to go. And yeah, um, I, you know, I've seen people um, not, I've heard, I'm sorry, I've heard of uh, people trying to get in the casket with the person and, yeah. you know, then you see some like crying really hard, some being quiet, um, you know, so it's like, you know, they want, what could I have done? What could I have done to prevent the loss? And um, sometimes they, you know, they, there's guilt and that's an expression sometimes of guilt with the, the crying extremely hard or trying to get in a casket and try to change things. And it's, it, you know, it's just too late. Whoops. Oh boy, I think I went back one too many. Yes. Okay. So depression. In this stage, we begin to realize and feel the true extent of the death or loss. Um, um, depression, that it, it, it's so important to... Um, to, to talk to someone, um, to not bottle it in, um, because that it, depression is, it, that's extreme sadness, um, major um, sadness, chronic sadness. And um, when, you, when you experience that, it can, sometimes you can think yourself into, you can overthink yourself into, depression and it, it can be because of a loss it can be um just from some traumatic experience so um again many, many times especially nowadays people there's so many people who are grieving 
on top of depression, on top of anxiety, on top of uh, a situation that was very tough to handle. Um, how do you process all of that? How do you get through the grief when you already got a financial situation? You already have, you know, maybe problems in the home, problems on the job, you know, you know exhausted from whatever, uh, pressure from, you know, this, that, and the other. And then you have the grief to deal with. How do you process all of that? Um, so, but there are answers. There is an answer. Um, the fourth stage of grief is anger. This stage is common. It usually happens when we feel helpless and powerless. Anger can stem from a feeling of abandonment because of a death or loss. And this is just something that I don't know if you can recall, um, you know, from feeling uh, the grief from a loss, that stage, if any of you remember being in that stage. And many times we give our power to the situation um, when we're feeling like that. And it's, it's so important to still remember that, you know what? I still have to be, um, I still have to be a, a mother. I still have to be a wife. I still have to be an employee or a, a business owner. You know, we still have to be who we, who God made us. We still have to be our, uh, play that role that we were, were given. And so, so, you know, and make important decisions and not based on our feelings, even while we're going through grief. So let me go to the next one. Uh, fifth stage, the, the fifth stage, stage of grief is acceptance. Acceptance. In time, we can come to terms with all the emotions and feelings we experience when the death or loss happens. So, um, I mean, that's self-explanatory. Um, um, sometimes it, it's difficult to uh, accept it, accept that, you know what? This person is gone. This person is never, never coming back. But you know what? We got, one of the things that is good to do is remember, um, just keep, rem have, remember the good times we had with the person. If it's a child or if it's um, through um, a miscarriage or an abortion or something like that, one of the things for, for is what I do is uh, I remember, I think about, you know what, when Jesus come back, I'm gonna see my child. And that's what I think about. That's what brings me comfort. That's what's an incentive for me to live a holy and righteous life here. And I was talking to um, a, a lady who her her um, her mother died, and she began sharing with me um, about the her the grief that she was feeling and uh, of the loss of her mom. And she said, "This is what she said to me, and I I, I wrote this down." She said, healing comes faster when you give it to him, meaning when you give it to God. This, this is what she did. And I saw when she was, she didn't want to say hi to me. It was, it was my colleague's mother who lost her mother. And I remember she used to always say hello and be ready to talk. She didn't want to do any of that. And that was fine. I understood that. So I didn't press her, hey, you know, let me just talk to you a moment. No, leave her alone. She, she needed that time um to do it how, or respond or react the way she was going to react and i didn't take offense to it because i knew that her mother died um she said to give him the glory in all circumstances she said um he gets uh he gets uh what did say he gets uh, you might not understand it but give him the glory give him the sacrifice of praise um that's your way of humbling yourself. 
and that's your way of letting go. That was her way of letting go. So, you know, someone else may have a different way of letting go. Um, one of the things that I did from my experience from having, uh, I mean, years went by and I can only talk about my experience and I would like to hear your experience as well. You know, those who are listening, um, when, um, I mean, the abortion that I had was several years ago um, in the, the 1900s, 1980s. And, and I didn't, not until the 2000s, is when I actually um, went to a lake and I, I wrote a poem and I um, had a flower, a rose, and I went to a lake and I read the poem. And uh, after I read the poem, this was my way of letting go. Um, I took the, the rose and I threw it in the lake and that was my way of letting go. And so, and it's different. And sometimes, you know, you think that you let go of this, a situation. Sometimes you don't, you know, you may not, you may think that you have forgiven yourself, but sometimes you have to do something tangible. Some people write letters and then they'll take it to the grave, um, to the grave site to, you know, just sit there and, and read the letter to their, their relative or the, the close relative who passed. And that's their way of letting go. Some people write letters and they burn it. Um, that's their way of letting go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there are many ways to, um, to let go. And that was my way for, for what I went through. Um, let me see. So can grief ever be resolved? What things might help resolve grief? One, and just I can tell you from my experience, accepting Jesus Christ as my Savior, that I'm telling you, if I didn't know Jesus, if I didn't have a relationship with the Lord, um, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know if I uh, would have been able to forgive myself. Um, I just don't know. But I do know that life with Christ in my life has, is, has made a big difference. It's making a big difference because I experienced the joy of the Lord. I experienced the peace of God. Um, and so acknowledge and accept both positive and negative feelings. Allow plenty of time to experience thoughts and feelings. Confide in a trusted person or a trusted friend about the loss. Express feelings openly or write journal entries about them. Find bereavement groups in which there are other people who have had uh, similar losses. Um, remember that crying can provide a release. Um, again, you know, no one, you may just randomly just feel like crying. It's okay. Go ahead, get, wipe your eyes, keep it moving. Seek professional help um, if feelings are overwhelming. And um, going for a walk and exercising, that makes a difference as well. And I uh, have scriptures. Um, there are scriptures in the Bible that you can read for strength um, because the word of God is life. The word of God is strength. And the ones that, I'm not going to go through all the scriptures, you can um screenshot it you can you know we can pray and do whatever we're going to do for people to get the scriptures but the ones that uh help me and that i uh just my favorites are <laughs> um where is that um whoops hold on psalm 34 18 the lord is close in the king james version i i like that how it says it in there the Lord is nearest to those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit or crushed spirit. So it says here, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. God sees what you're going through. He knows uh, uh, how you're feeling because he, he made you. So he knows your heart. 
So it's so important to um, reach out to him, keep receiving his love. Don't turn your back on him because he's there. He's there waiting for you. He's there. The Holy Spirit is there. Uh, the Holy Ghost is there to comfort you. He's, he's a comforter and a guide. So the Holy Ghost is there to comfort you and guide you. Jesus heals. I mean, so it's good to draw, to realize that he's there. Because he said he's close to you during that time. Um, and then let me see, there's another one. Um, Psalm 147, verse 3. He heals a broken heart and binds up their wounds. A broken heart. It, that's it, he binds that up. Um, okay. There's oh, I can go back if you need it. Oh. Okay, I don't know if anyone was screenshotting it, but um, you can also see where it where it's found. And then he says, John 14 and 1, this one, I was like, you know, someone's probably going to ask, how do I not let my heart get troubled? But he says, don't let your heart uh, be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. And just knowing who he is, it is a strength to you. It, it can help you to rest in knowing that he's going to carry through, you through whatever situation. He's not telling you not to feel because he made you and he, he made, he knows that you have emotions. He knows that you have feelings. So he, but he says he still wants you to turn those feelings over to him to still look to him. Don't forget about him. Do not let your heart uh, be troubled. Um, and then Joshua one and I, um, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Uh, do not be afraid. Do not uh, be discouraged. Discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you um, wherever you go. Um, let me see. And, this, um, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. And then he says, blessed are those who are, who mourn. Uh, Fran, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I wanted to ask Sorry. you. Um, so for, we have a lot of believers sometimes when they go through a loss, a significant loss, such maybe a mother or someone that's close to them, a child, um, they may go through that brief period or a lengthy period where they're no longer praying. They're no longer believing in God because it said, you know, God, why did you do this to me? If you are God, why did you let this happen? Or things like that. What type of recommendation would you um, say to that person who believes that maybe God has let them down or God has failed them? Uh, well, one of the things that I would just en encourage them to do is know that um, if, if you said they're a believer, yeah. that's what you said first. Okay. Yeah. Again, um, turning to the scriptures, knowing that um, you know what he still loves you. Just because you went you went through a situation, mm -hmm. he's still there loving you. He's still there um, uh, meeting your need. He's still there. The Holy Ghost is there to comfort you. Um, it, it is your emotions that you feel, um, and if you look at different. David said, um, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock mm -hmm. that is higher than I. He said that in Psalm 61. So, um, and then he, in Psalm 25, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He encouraged himself. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. So the enemy can be those negative thoughts that come in. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, there's, a, there's another one. Um, but, but those, just for now, those scriptures are good to remember as a believer um, that God is still there. It's just that we are going through. God doesn't have to go through, but we go through situations. And then we have to remember that he's there. He's there to help us. He's there to um, carry us through. 
So I hope that answers. Yes, it does. Thank you. Oh, good, good. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So the, these are other um, scriptures that I um, wanted to include. And then uh, just the resources. I've included some resources. Um, just the scriptures on grieving. Um, that's a go-to. Um, you, you, there is strength and going to a Bible-based church. I'm not, and I want to emphasize this, not going for the people, but just going for the word, mm. going to hear the word. Because some, you know, people, there are people who they're like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to church. Um, they experience church hurt. And I'm not talking about that. Um, our relationship should not be based with God, should not be based on someone else's relationship. Uh, with God or what they don't do, what they, you know, it's just go there to get the strength that you need um, while you're grieving because there is strength in going to um, to church, especially while you're grieving. Um, there's local community grief support groups. Some neighborhoods have that. Um, I did uh, check out the national support groups through um griefspeaks.com and uh, the, they are children. Um, sometimes I think we forget about the children that they have feelings too and they don't know how to process uh, grief. So there's a National Alliance for Children's Grief. Um, that's a, there's a website for that. Um, I've had many uh, clients, many people that have contacted me uh, that are have gone through grief or they're asking about, uh, asking to be um, counseled about grief. So I encourage many people about uh, grief and I put my information there um, just in case. Um, but there's this, so, it's trauma. It, it's the trauma that, that we go through. Um, so grief is a type of, of trauma. And just, you know, again, the go-to is, since this is a faith-based um, uh, event that you have, Fran, mm -hmm. uh, Sister Fran, just our go-to is Jesus. He, at the end of the day, that's where our healing comes from. He's not called your whole Rafa for nothing. Absolutely. And I think... Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Larry? You have to... You have to unmute. Yeah, you, you unmute. Unmute your mic. And the three, the three dots in the corner, uh, see upper right-hand corner, click on that. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Um, to uh, Sister Fran and Brother Matthew, thank you very much for the forum. And to my better half, Dr. Joy Johnson, I was thinking, um, this is right on time for what you're doing. Um, and children are very important, but in the process that I'm in, I, I deal with a lot of men. And what I'm finding out is that a lot of men don't know how to grieve. Because mm -hmm. as little boys, they were told men don't cry, you know, all these different things. Mm -hmm. And I have to be able to be willing to have a hard conversation or ask a hard question. And my question always comes down to the same thing. Why are you mad at God? To me, that is a very important question because it's, you can shoot a bunch of arrows, but if you don't have a target that you're shooting at, then you can't get rid of what you're going through. And through my own, um, and like I said, Joy is very, this is on time. I just lost my first cousin. Um, we, my family was preparing a family reunion, but now we have a death. So our family reunion has turned into a funeral. So I know through my own processes that I have to learn how to replace um, stuff that's, that's negative or, or heavy to me. I got to 
to replace it with something. Because if I don't replace my grief with something joyful, the grief keep returning over and over. That's just for me. I got to learn how to replace it. I can't leave that space open. Because when I do, what I, what I got rid of comes back. So I just wanted to share that and thank my wife very much for, you know, for doing this. And um, for all of us to keep in mind that um, it's time for us to be willing to have those real good, hard conversations with the ones we love. Life is going to show up. You know, when you speak life, you, 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 death is going to come. And if you, and especially being Christ-centered, and we're talking about Jesus, Jesus lived so he can die so he can live again. So that means we are in the process. Amen. I just wanted to share that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that is so true what you're saying about men and emotions, because um, in general, that's, that's the standards and the expectation that society has set for men. And even mm -hmm. with, uh, when it comes to mental illness in general, you know, men are not supposed to be showing emotions. So what are they supposed to do with that emotion? They're human beings just like everyone else. So what are they supposed to do with that emotion? So definitely um, we do need to start having these conversations, these hard on conversation. And that's one of the reasons why I do um, forums such as this. So we can get these conversations and these resources into areas such as the Christian community, because a lot of times these things are not talked about in depth as they should be. You know, and, and, and Dr. Johnson, you touched on something that I found very relevant, and that's um, grief also happens with friendship, because a lot of times when we think about grief, we're only thinking death, and it happens in friendships, it happens yeah. with divorce, oh my goodness. That's right. You know, and how is it impacting the children, the, the silent right. voices, the, the vulnerable populations mm -hmm. that are, are just basically pushed in the corner. You be quiet and let the adults grieve and do what they have to do. Right. But, um, you know, we see the suicide rates in children right now. It's ridiculous. So that's yeah, right. thank and, you so much. And that's one of the things. Um, thank you, uh, Fran. And that's one of the things that I mentioned about um, a guide to traumatized children, the book that I wrote, the, the um, nine-year-old boy uh, attempted suicide, only nine. Mm. And so I ended up having um, four, I'm sorry, yeah, it was four siblings. Um, so I, I ended up having 17 counseling sessions with them. And it was all because his siblings were calling him names. And I had to, uh, this reinforce and it's so important this is why it's important to affirm yourself know who you are because when that's the attack of the enemy even through children yeah. with siblings um telling calling them uh ne negative things out of their name uh, negatively labeling them parents some parents do too i have relatives that this the, the child um my cousin they uh, a cousin of mine years ago when they were growing up the mother called them uh, stupid and ugly. These are all negative uh, labels um, that were put on the child and they have a rough time today. That's, it's so important to know who you are because that's your fight against the enemy. You have to, it, just like Jesus said in Matthew 4, it is written, for it is written. Um, get, and he said, get thee behind me, Satan. And this is one, these, these are the things that we have to say. Mm -hmm. um, even while grieving because we're vulnerable at that time. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is constant, but we have to be more constant than he is. And, and telling him where he's going and, and reminding ourselves who we are. Because we, we, yes. we, are, we are created in, in God's likeness, in image and likeness. We are beautifully and fearfully and wonderfully made, like Psalm 139 says. We have to remember that we do have a voice, and that we're good, in, that we're that we're good enough, and that we're a good person, a good friend, and just remember, affirm yourself even through these tough times, so that, that will help take you through the grieving uh, process. Affirming yourself helps that. Yeah. And you know, if I may, you know, you <clears throat> from what you just spoke on, it, it brought something else to mind. One of the biggest lies I remember as a little kid growing up was when someone told me. Sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. And you know, right now, today, in 2022, 
you have little kids that are saying this and believing it. And to me, that was an avenue for the enemy to get in. Mm -hmm. So that they say, well, well name, name, you can, names don't hurt, names just, but that's one of the biggest lies that, that I know that's, that's still giving birth to lies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in 2022. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The other name for it is is verbal abuse. Exactly. <laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> That's the other name. I'm for it. That, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we close up, I'm just gonna ask anyone here if they have yes, any um, questions. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. No. I'm just saying something, Fran. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. I wanted to interject. Uh, and, um, an early, a bit earlier, but I just want to say thank you, Doc, for this information because um, I'm yeah. traveling with um, battling depression, and um, I lost my mom from from know the entire situation. She was one of my stronghold, and um, the different category that you put it it really resonates to me, and um, I must say thank you so much because uh, you know you went in a little bit more deep into it and. Um, it helps. It really do. So thank you so much. The part that you said, um, when you said, okay, with depression, there are different types of depression and um, the grieving process. When you grieve, sometimes yeah. you just go in the frame of denial. And uh, that was one of, um, it's not that I wasn't depressed before, but the way I lost my mom and how everything happened. Then COVID was in the midst of it. And um, we couldn't be there for her funeral. We couldn't attend the funeral only my sister and my dad. So it was like a lot to process. It's like I took her to the hospital. That was it. And then no goodbye. Couldn't even send her off. So it kind of went carry me into a spiral. And then everything else came into place from one thing to the next. My whole house was COVID positive. Then, you know, one thing leads to another. You know, when the devil the devil wants to play, he plays, um, he, as usual, he doesn't play fair. So it's like from one situation to the next. But I always say God is still on the throne. He's faithful and he's still faithful to his promise. So, you know, and with good people around you that give you that support, like Fran and Matthew. And, you know, we have a lot of other people around. So I'm grateful for that. So thank you for the information. I hope it bless some mm -hmm some people's heart and touch souls and make Matthew, a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. And, and Matthew, let me ask a question. I see that you're recording this and how we can help um, um, finance with what you guys are doing. Are you going to put it on a DVD or so we can purchase it and then that money could go towards your organization or how, how does that work? Um, so this is going to go on my um, my YouTube channel. I do have um, a website. Matthew's going to put the information in. Thank you. So I do have a website with a donation tab. If anyone wants to donate, they can actually um, use either Zelle or PayPal or any one of the um, the forms that we have. And thank you so much for they, that. But how can they get this uh, segment here? They can visit the um, the YouTube channel. Okay, and it'll be there. Right. So once I'm finished, um, I'll, I'll prepare it and then put it on the YouTube channel, and I'll send you a copy as well. Good job. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. This was such an excellent forum. I do hope that we can work, um, you know, and, and continue this with different conversation, different topics, because. The work that we do is, is relevant to the community and the community needs this work. Um, do you have a copy of your book so we can show? No? Okay. Oh. <laughs> but um, I'm going to put sorry. a link I to it. To get it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put a link to it in, in, in the comments so anyone who needs that can get it as well. I'm going to get my copy. And, and, and since the friend, if I may, just a suggestion. Yes. You know, there's a lot of organizations that have uh, females that are in locations where they have to be. And what they're doing now is they're allowing different uh, things like this to go on there. And you have a group of 20, 30 women in a room and they can listen in on it. Um, they can learn from it. Um, so I, I'm just 
that's just something maybe you could look into. Um, I'm really trying to push my wife in that area because um, there's there's a lot of women out there that, that need to, that need help. Okay. Um, and if they're already in a location, then once they okay it, you know they'll say okay. At a certain time, we have this coming on, and they'll be there. They'll be there. You know. Um, I just think it'd be so helpful. Okay, I'll look into that. I'll definitely look into that. But thank you once again. Thank you everyone for this presentation and we are looking forward to doing the next one. So yeah. have a great evening, everyone. Thank See you. you guys soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Maybe next, maybe next time I can hear Matthew say something. Cause you <laughs> wasn't on the mic. You're talking but I can't hear you. <laughs> Matthew, give a few words, wrap us up. <laughs> Yeah, wrap us up. Well, no, um, um, a friend made a point that 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 I was gonna ask is um how, how do you deal with a person who is alive but they're grieving over the death of a friendship and a, a um, divorce of the relationship? So how do you deal with seeing that person still? They still alive. They still have another family. They still move on with their life, and you still see that person. And you're still grieving that, that that broken relationship or that broken marriage or that broken friendship. How do you still move on? How do you grieve that? How do you get through that process? Knowing that a person's still alive. Now, we talk about somebody who died, but what happened when a person's still alive? And you're still grieving, the, grieving that, that relationship that you thought was going to work or that <clears> friendship <throat> that lasted for 20 or 30 years, then they betray you, and now you're dealing with 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 the grief of a loss of a friend who mm -hmm. dead, dead alive how you deal with someone who is still alive but you're grieving over it mm -hmm. i experienced um someone who is dealing with that uh today and um one of the things that it's helping them is to remember why they shouldn't be with that person even though that that may sound like, you know, uh, minute, but remembering the reasons why they should not be with that person. Um, and, and that's why it's important to also know who you are and not to put all your eggs in one basket. Um, because I mentioned in the beginning how one, there could be a loss in a relationship and one person, you know, really loved the other and the other person didn't. And you could be grieving, and, you know, they, you, you go on your separate ways, but the person is still loving that person. There's, yeah. there's basically no hope in that. So it's best to see how, see what you need to do. What is your purpose? What is your purpose in life? Remember that you have a purpose, that you, your family needs you that you, you don't, you, yeah, it's important not to look back, not to look back, not to look behind you because what's behind you is dead, but it's like beating a dead horse. You're trying to bring it back to life and it's not, it's wasting time. And just like the story about Lot's wife, mm -hmm. um, she looked back and she looked back to what was dead and she turned to a pillow of salt. Mm -hmm. So it's so important important to move forward, to move, keep moving forward. Don't waste time. There's so You have a role that you have to play, that you have to live out. You have a purpose and see what purpose that you have and go for that. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so that's one of the ways that they can uh, move forward and let go at the same time. And, and if I may, uh, wifey, um, I think it's very important for each person to look at their own part because we can look outside at someone else's part and find so many different things. But if we stop and just look at our own part, what is my part? And look at that. Then I think that's another um, a bridge that can get us over troubled waters, if I may. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that to me, that's so important because the Bible says, what good is a man who put his hands to the plow and look back? He's not fit for the kingdom of God. That's so, what I'm saying. 
Go ahead. Yeah. That's all saying the role. And 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 Matthew, we're gonna um thank you. And that's good. Thank you for adding on to that, uh Larry. Um and, and Matthew, you were about to say something as well. Um was that helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was it. that was it. Mm -hmm. Um a friend I brought it up then then I decided to add another part to it. That's it. Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap up and call it the evening. Have a blessed evening, everyone. This was a great forum. Looking forward to the next one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you too, Fran and Dr. Johnson. Appreciate it. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Later. Bye. 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 Bye.